Hi, my name is Hayley Aldridge. I've just turned 30. It's a very cruel existence to try and to live next to someone and they tell you like, oh, so you're gonna lose her. Yeah, when, when, when this all came about the second time, she had to phone me up and tell me, she's like, uh, you know, don't worry, Dad, you know, I'm the lucky one, you know, um, you've got to put up, you know, with me going through this and then, you know, I'll be gone and you'll be having to deal with it sort of thing. You know, it's, it's just things like that that you sort of find hard to, to sort of comprehend. One sacrifice that has been particularly hard for many to bear over the past year has been not being able to see friends and family who live in Australia. Our health response now gives us the opportunity to connect with loved ones again as we start a new chapter in our recovery. Cabinet was presented with advice today that the conditions for opening up quarantine-free travel with Australia have been met. Now, the travel bubble will be welcome news, no doubt, to our next guest, Hayley Eldridge. Hayley is with us, joins us now from Melbourne. Oh my gosh, hello, I'm ecstatic, I'm so happy, I'm surprised my phone is working because it's covered in tears, happy tears, um, but wow, oh my god. <laughs> Why does this mean so much to you, Hayley? I have a terminal cancer diagnosis and I only have a few months left. It's been really hard to um, go back home because I don't have the time to quarantine in New Zealand and then quarantine back here. This no bubble basically means I get to just jump on a flight and finally go home for a few days. Was that to be told that you uh, you're dying? Uh, it came as like an absolute shock because I wasn't actually even getting tested for cancer. I was getting tested for a hormonal issue. So I wasn't even thinking I had cancer, let alone being told I was going to die. Um, we planning our wedding. Um, we were planning on moving home. I was so good. Like, I was so good. And then I thought I actually was getting tested for a hormonal issue that I thought um, was stopping me from falling pregnant. It was something I just was not expecting. I didn't have one symptom, no signs or anything, so. And yet you're always so happy and upbeat and positive whenever I talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> You've just been told that you're dying. There's, um, it's hard to explain. Um, I'm, I'm just, I'm lucky. I'm very lucky. <laughs> I have the man of my dreams by my side. I've got a wonderful family. It's like, how can I not be happy? Wow. I think there's people who'll be watching this who'll be thinking that your attitude is pretty incredible. It's sort of, um, a lot of people tell me I'm, um, I'm brave or resilient. Um, and I think that sort of um, description applies to anyone going through something I'm going through. Um, but it's not accurate. I'm not brave. I'm scared 24 seven. Mm. I'm not resilient. Like I have no choice, but to accept this fate. Like I have no choice. Like I wouldn't say that's resilient because this is what I've been handed. Like I have no choice. So it's just about how I just make the most of my life now. So yeah. I just choose to be happy. You are, I understand, going up in a helicopter today to sort of 
survey the city you grew up if in. If that's not like the most perfect thing for me to do on this trip, to just like look down and be like, I love this place. I don't know what is. <laughs> and to experience it with Joel and my dad. We've never been on a helicopter. It's just going to be amazing. Amazing. What did you want to come home for? Because you could, your parents could have come to you. That's correct. Right? Yeah. So, what is it you want? Why did you want to come home? This is my happy place. There's nothing more calming than being in New Zealand, being around New Zealand people. It's just, it's peaceful, and it's ever. The older I get, the more I appreciate it. Um, and um, you know, that's why me and my partner in talks. You're like, this is where we want to raise our children, and. Um, you know, get a little bit of land and have some chickens and get some goats and, you know, just live the, live the good life. And that's what you get here, so. You told me when we spoke on the radio, you wanted to sort of say goodbye to a lot of things. Yes. So what, are you, what have you come back to say goodbye to? I feel like I need closure. So whether that's taking Joel to my high school and just walking around my high school or walking up and down the main street of like, you know, Rangiora, just little things like that that I haven't been able to show him before. Um, so he can come back here one day and just be like, this is Haley. This was Haley's life. To be honest, um, it's hard to, um, I, I do a good job, which is probably a bad thing to do, but of blocking it out. I don't want to think as to why we're doing it. Do you know what I mean? We should have been on um, different under different circumstances, but um, it's it's very important, I think, for sure, just to, to always have it to live up here. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So that you know where she, what school she went to, yeah. and the town she grew up yeah. in, and because she's always, I've I've always heard about it, our relationship, but it, it would be good to get a visual for it, if that makes sense. So instead of just right now, they're just mental pictures, if that makes any sense. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Because I I can't I can't deal with it at the moment. I'm just sort of day by day, and I don't think further than today, you know. And that's just the way you got to be. Otherwise, I'll just be, in, I'll just be miserable. Yeah. So I've just got to think and take. You know, she's so happy, and you know, you look at it now, and you wouldn't even think what's going on inside her. You know, uh -huh. whereas before, um, you know, there were signs of it, and you know, it was always there. And um, but now you just, it's like God. You know, you just can't believe it. But you know, the day will come when things will start getting obvious again, but it's just, it's, I mean, you just got to take it as it is. Is there anything that you want people to know? Like you've spoken about, you know, you're getting your message across. What's your message? What do you want people to know either about the cancer or about the treatment or whatever? Um, my main reason, I think initially for wanting to talk to people or share my story I actually wanted to do that before I was re-diagnosed and I wanted to bring a lot of awareness for PTSD after patients with who had gone through cancer because it's just not spoken about. People think once you uh, finish cancer, it's like, yay, I'm in remission, hallelujah. But for a lot of people, that's actually when they spiral into a depression and they then live. It's like they're in shock the entire time going through the process and then it's sort of you go on remission and you've got this like sense of like wow and then you relive it and it's a lot it's really traumatic and i think people that don't go through cancer also should be educated on the ptsd because everyone knows someone who's affected with it i've had a lot of people reach out and be like my friend's been diagnosed how do i talk to her 
And for me, that's so powerful because I do, I do, I'm just like, the fact that you've even reached out and you've asked this just shows how much of a supportive, incredible friend that you are. I haven't really thought about it. I feel like it's not happening. Yeah. And I'm focusing on like, just being with you and I'm so, I'm so in denial. You watch, I ball my eyes out tonight. I hope so. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm kidding. You know me, remember how bad I was at home, just crying? And you were like, shut up, pussy. <laughs> you know how much I care. Yeah. Ready? What's your advice to people? Not, not Nothing to do with cancer, nothing to do with just generally in life. Yeah. You've lived a very, very incredible 29 years. When's your birthday? I turned 30. Oh. I turned 30 April 3rd. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> it, it is. It, it was a milestone that I wasn't sure I was going to meet. So, again. That's, that's the big number. I know, right? So, <laughs> 30 and thriving. <laughs> um, my advice? Every day is a good day, except some days are better than others. <laughs> that would be my advice. To live by that. Because it's true. Every day is a good day.